Hello and welcome to the Futurum Tech webcast. I'm your host, Stephen Dickens, and I'm joined by fellow Futurum analyst Ron Westfall and Andy Hartman from Mainline and Andrew Gracie from SUSE. And today we're going to be talking about SUSE Rancher on said systems and Linux One. Welcome to the show, everyone. Thank you. You bet. So let's just go quickly around and do some introductions. This is going to be fantastic. We've got an Andrew and an Andy on the sh show today. <laughs> so we're going to have to sort of have some fun here. But Andrew, just first off, position your role. Yeah. So I'm one of the product managers uh, working on Rancher at SUSE. Fantastic. And Andy? Yeah, I'm a senior consultant at Mainline, and I focus on uh, IBM Z and Linux One workloads. Excellent. And and Ron, just introduce yourself quickly for the listeners here. You bet. I'm Ron Westfall, Research Director and Senior Analyst here at Futurum Research. And I head up coverage at areas related to cloud, Kubernetes, et cetera. Fantastic. So let's dive straight in here. Um, Andy, we've spoken before, but let's just get orientated here. What were some of Mainline's objectives for adopting SUSE Rancher? What were the sort of things that were in your mind? Yeah, so I, think, project. I think from our standpoint, um, we had, you know, basically two objectives. Uh, the first major one was uh, ease of implementation. So, um, you know, with, with the Kubernetes environments, they're complex. Um, and we wanted to make sure that Rancher on Z was the same to implement as Rancher anywhere else. And that was very important to us. Um, you know, it's, it's very hard to, you know, um, if, if you have a hard time implementing a product, it makes it harder to take advantage of you know, the reasons you actually are using the product. So we, um, we were very concerned about that. And I think, you know, from what we've seen and everything, they've, they've come through with uh, flying colors. So, and then the second objective obviously was Rancher itself. Um, being able to manage multiple Kubernetes clusters from one pane of glass makes it much easier um, and much simpler, um, you know, for initial application deployment as, long, as well as management and, and other things like that. So very happy with that as well. Fantastic. And thanks, Andy. I think that definitely tees up Andrew for a burning question that I believe folks out there would love to hear more about. And that is why do customers want SUSE Rancher on their mainframes? You know, what is spurring broader adoption out there? Yeah, so I think we're seeing um, kind of in the, the larger IT industry, we're seeing a lot of uh, adoption of Kubernetes. Um, and there's a lot of good reasons for this. Uh, but it's one of the main things that, that Rancher allows for people adopting Kubernetes to do is uh, basically shorten the, the, um, the time that it takes to actually get up and running on Kubernetes, uh, both from the actual technical implementation portion, uh, where, for example, uh, RKE2 is literally, you just say RKE2 up it's, and, it, and it starts going. Uh, K3S is you literally run a, a single line script and then you've got a cluster. Uh, so being able to kind of shorten the technical portion of, of how to spin up a cluster that has everything that you need already kind of pre-built in, um, it, as well as um, the, the, the human process and the learning that you have to do. Uh, there is so much to learn in Kubernetes uh, and, it, and it's continually changing and updating. Uh, so being able to have uh, some some nice abstractions, a good a good user interface, uh, to both allow for discovery as well as your day to day work, um, we believe that we provide quite a bit of value uh, between those those two kind of ease of use um, value points. And Andy, that leads on to sort of a, a really qu sort of question for me. Andrew there talked about sort of that experience of the deployment. Mm -hmm. What's yeah. in the, the mainline experiences you guys have got to play with this technology? Does it align, align there to what Andrew was saying? Yeah, sure. The, um, we, um, so what we do, we have a, we have a, what's called a business partner innovation center and it's where we um, bring customers and other partners in to 
either test products or show customers new new products and technologies and stuff. So within this environment, I have a Z15, and so I um, using some very simple instructions that um, you know I was sent. Um, I created um, basically based on Susie's recommendations. I created six what in essence is six Linux guests. Um, all running under ZVM, which was the hypervisor, um, with some very simple um, characteristics. So they all had the same amount of disk. They all had the same virtual processors, all that stuff. So very simple to implement. Um, as far as uh, RK2 and uh, Rancher itself, <laughs> I don't think it could be much easier. Um, Mike Friesenegger, who I worked with closely from SUSE to do this, um, you know, sent me a two-page document, literally it was two pages, and um, and then sent me like four videos, and these videos were like five minutes apiece. And so following the videos and the two-page documentation, I went ahead and implemented uh, both RK2 and Rancher. So basically what that entails is you deploy your six links guests. Um, you then deploy um, RK2 on the first cluster, which contains three Linux guests, so a, a control node and two agent nodes. Um, on top of that, you deploy Rancher, and then in the second uh, set of Linux guests, you um, deploy Rancher or RK2 again, this time without Rancher, and then um, this is where you're going to deploy your applications. Once that's done, you connect the two clusters together so Rancher can manage both clusters, and then you deploy your, your user apps. It's that simple. So, Andy, how long was that taking from yeah, sort of start? Probably to took me, um, you know, I would say less than two hours. That includes, that includes the deployment of a Linux guest, and I did those manually. So, I mean, <laughs> it's like... Um, with with a little bit of uh, simple scripting and stuff, you could probably get this down to a couple commands. I mean, it's it's not that hard. Um, so anybody who's experienced in this space, yeah, it's anybody be anybody that is experienced can do this. Absolutely, and you, even a even a junior system admin can do this. You know, um, so it 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 worked out very well. And a lot of the steps in this are repetitive. So I'm deploying two two Kubernetes clusters to do this. Um, so it's very easy and it gets, it, it's very easy to do once you've done it a couple of times. So I did this, I created, um, three different test environments. So I tested this on SUSE. So it's SLES 15 SP3. I deployed it on RHEL 8.5 and I deployed it on Ubuntu 2204, which are the time or the current versions of those distributions. And all of them worked the same. Um, there were no big differences. There were no, um, you know, one of the other things I liked about this was the fact that I didn't have to come up with a lot of prereqs. So there wasn't a lot of stuff I had to do beforehand. It was pretty much, I came up with six IP addresses for the guests and that's about all I had to do. Um, so very simple um, to actually implement. I mean, that's one of the key differentiators here, the multi Linux distro support. Did you find that as easy as it kind of sounded there in your comments? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I do. I mean, it's very important. I mean, we, you know, we do not want to have that battle with, you know, customers where they have a long, you know, a heritage of this particular distribution and we're introducing a new product and now you got to swap out your distribution or something or have two multiple distributions. So that never works out well. So being able to deploy this across distributions makes it, you know, agnostic and it, you know, it makes it very, very easy. So. Yeah, and I'll jump in there and say that that's one of the things that, that we were very intentional about uh, is is being able to provide that that support for uh, basically any enterprise Linux distribution uh, because we we recognize that that tool change cost can be quite high. Mm -hmm. uh, and if that doesn't have a value associated with that tool change cost, then why should we force somebody to do that? Um, because the customers already have tooling built out for their chosen operating system. And if we, if there's not a technical reason to actually, to, to require a change, uh, we don't, we shouldn't need to, we shouldn't do that. And that's an excellent point, Andrew. Uh, what do you see are some of the other benefits, you know, the, the value 
uh, that customers out there are gaining from adopting uh, SUSE uh, Rancher? Uh, what, what are the key takeaways here? Yeah, so I think that, I mean, besides the, the kind of simplification um, of the, I shouldn't say simplification, but the, the uh, bringing the, the, the uh, use of Kubernetes uh, to a more reasonable level of, of experience, um, uh, we also see a lot of value around our flexibility. Um, we, we will, we're able to meet you where you are. Uh, in your process, um, we uh, we hope to provide a lot of value with uh, continuing the the um, the engineering and kind of continuing to push uh, the envelope a bit on kind of in, in multiple different aspects: um, security, uh, observability, developer experience. Right? Um, these are all things that are that are on our roadmap and. We hope to continually be pushing pushing forward on each of those areas. And yeah, I think that brings to mind uh, why customers should go this uh, path, because there, after all, there are do-it-yourself Kubernetes implementation uh, alternatives out there. And uh, from your perspective, uh, you know why is SUSE Rancher, you know, simply a advantageous approach versus say do-it-yourself? Yeah, so I mean, do it yourself is a perfectly valid way to go, uh, mm -hmm. but it does obviously increase your your risk as a company. Uh, there's a couple of different ways that it does that, or at least it, this is all my opinion, right? Uh, but there's a couple of different ways that it does that. Uh, the first is um, all the tooling that you build up to to do the do it yourself uh, way. Uh, you you're going to be maintaining that. You're going to be uh, supporting that. Uh, and and you're going to be doing that over a, a longer time, and especially when the Kubernetes ecosystem is iterating so so quickly, um, there that risk of of breakages between different Kubernetes releases uh, becomes much higher, um, especially if you aren't um, releasing uh, on the right cadence and you start falling behind. Um, the the it becomes really hard to catch back up, uh, especially if you're the one maintaining the tooling, which now you have to write all the tooling to catch back up. Uh, and so, you utilizing um, RKE, for example, um, we do that for you. So now you don't have to worry about that. You just go and say, okay, cool, I'm using RKE two, uh, and I'm going to upgrade. Um, and I go into Rancher, I go upgrade and you're done <laughs> makes sense yeah what's not to like <laughs> yeah. from my perspective yes uh, it sounds very uh compelling i think that support andy is going to be really interesting you know for some of the clients do you do you see the same sort of dynamic there oh absolutely i see i would say in our customer mix you know they're not going to have huge numbers of people to to go out and do this on their own they're going to need you know these are enterprise uh, customers so they need support they need a structure behind um you know whatever they deploy so that you're not rolling your own you're you're supported you have you know you have someone to call if something happens this kind of things and you know it, it's just a much more streamlined way of of implementing a kubernetes uh, cluster you know, our strategy. And is that because of the criticality of these environments? I mean, obviously we're talking here about Linux one systems. Oh, obviously, yes, absolutely. I mean, these are, these are mission critical workloads. These are, you know, these, these workloads run your business. So they cannot go down. They, you know, you can't, you can't have outages because of, you know, I'm upgrading my Kubernetes cluster. So I have to take my whole um, system down to do it. That can't be done anymore. So um, it becomes, paramount to be able to have this managed and um you know supported um you know around the clock so fantastic as we look to wrap up here andy what are some th key thoughts and takeaways from your experience here with who's around sure on linux one and z systems well i think since i mean i think most of our customers probably have already looked at rancher or some other kubernetes um implementation 
um, or arcade tune. But um, you know, you're already there. You're already going down this path. So I think Rancher on Z is a great place to take advantage of you know the reliability, the scalability, um, security, and especially the co-location capabilities that you have with, if you're using data or applications from ZOS. Um, it's a very easy thing to implement. It's easy to manage, and you can get up and running quickly. And I think those are all great benefits. And and you, Andrew, what, what would you add to that? Yeah, I think um, there's also a lot of benefit that comes with with adopting the the Kubernetes paradigm, um, especially around um, especially around the human processes, right? Uh, the the way that Kubernetes kind of pushes you to structure your application uh, and manage it really leads to a much more um, healthy uh, team dynamic. Um, I mean, it doesn't have to, but it, it allows you to to have a more healthy team dynamic uh, and and break up roles and responsibilities in a way that makes uh, potentially quite a bit more sense. Um, and it just enables a lot of the lessons that that the rest of the industry has been has been learning in the last uh, five to ten years, for example. And I think we focus so much on the technology, we sometimes don't take into account some of those wider sort of people and process benefits. Yeah. What's the, what's the point of the tech if it doesn't help the people who are having to to deal exactly. with it? I think yeah. that's about as fantastic a statement yeah. as we can have there to yeah. wrap up. I think really great discussion, guys. Really enjoyed this. I think I'd direct every one of the listeners and, and viewers here to download the research. Um, fantastic deep dive on the benefits of Sousa Rancher on Linux One and Zed Systems. And thank you very much for listening. We'll speak to you next time. Thanks very much. <laughs>